So we have a Wii remote uh, that uh, motion control doesn't work anymore. So let's see if we can fix it. To open it we need the bit Y1 driver. Got four screws in it. This is pretty easy to open. Just open it facing down, the buttons are facing down, otherwise they would drop everywhere those buttons. Then we have the PCB or the circuit board. Let's see if we can find an obvious issue with that. First let's do our uh, visual inspections with the microscope to see if we can see anything burnt or broken or something that stands out from the rest of the board. It's always a good idea to do a visual inspection first before doing any other diagnostic steps. Because sometimes there might be a burnt component or loose component or a broken component or just a missing component. Because these remotes get abused a lot. Get thrown around and dropped and stuff like that. And every time when you drop something with a circuit board in it, especially surface mounted components, you may lose a component that way. <coughs> Circuit board seems to be okay. Looks pretty nice. This is the accelerometer, the chip that is responsible for the motion control. Seems okay. It's not burned or anything, or the component next to it uh, seems to be okay. Let's continue the inspection. <clears throat> the capacitor needs, seems to be okay. This filter here looks a little bit suspicious with the green band around it. So the one that is marked F1, I think it's a filter, I don't, I don't know, I don't have the semantics for this circuit board. Let's try and poke it with uh, tweezers. Usually if a component is burned or broken, it breaks when you poke it a little bit with the tweezer, but this seems to be okay. So let's continue if we find something else. So there's another filter, it looks the same, so I guess it's okay. So the joints on these pins look a little bit dry, maybe we, we should add a little bit more new solder to them and reflow them. I don't think it's the cause of the issue, but since we're here, we might as well do it to prevent future issues. So let's take the plastic stuff off. So we don't melt anything. The circuit board looks to be okay. There's no obvious burnt component components or anything like that.
let's get a little bit more light yeah since there was no obvious issue let's start by first freshening up these solder joints here with the pins Get the soldering iron. Get the flux. So Flux is a grease that helps the solder flow again, so it adds, adds flexibility and makes it easier for the solder iron to melt the solder. So every time when you're doing a soldering work, you should always use Flux, it makes your life a lot easier. So I'll add in the description every tool that I use on this and every chemical that I use. Uh, I use a soldering iron called TS100. It's a small so soldering iron made for PCB repairs and phone repairs and everything like that. You can get different kind of tips on it. And it's easy to use and it's quick to heat up. It's very quick to heat up. So as you can see, we just warm up the joint, add a little bit more solder to it to freshen it up. Not much, only a little bit, because if you add too much, it's easy to create bridges between the pins and that are those are bad. You create a short and you may break the PCP. So be careful when you're doing this, that you don't create any bridges. They saw the difference, there wasn't much flux on that other pin, it didn't flow that well first. So this wasn't probably the cause of the issue that we're having that the motion control is not working but this is just a preventive precautionary that we take in order to prevent any future issues with uh, I believe these pins are power related so the power to the PCP comes via these pins so there wouldn't won't be any issues in the future with power losses or with issues and when I was going through the internet and I saw that many of the issues that the Vive remote was not turning on was caused by these soldier joints on these pins that weren't gone dry or broken so this is a good thing to do when you're you're doing some repairs on the PCB now the at the actual culprit I think is the accelerometer chip that is responsible for the motion control uh, that detects when you're moving the remote around there is an IR camera in the front that is uh, that is responsible the motion of when you're pointing at your screen and the sensor bar is picking up the IR camera signal uh, but the actual motion when you're 
turning a, the remote round is uh, done by this chip here. So let's add some flux to it and reflow the chip since I think it has gotten loose or there's a loose connection there because it has been abused and drawn around and dropped a lot. So we add some flux and use a heat gun or a heat soldering iron to warm up the chip and reflow it. So we the uh, temperature of the heat gun here I had 400 degrees that's Celsius 400 Celsius and the higher temperature you have the less time you need to keep it there in order to get the solders again flowing. So the point here is get the chip warm and once it's warm enough so that the solder melts uh, you just slightly and gently poke it with a tweezer so that it moves a little bit and it flows right back to the pins again. So if you move it too much you will misalign it and it will not work but if you slightly poke it and you can see it, it's slightly sort of swimming on the PCP there then you know that it has reflown and when it's reflowed it the metal pads underneath the chip will actually sh suck the chip back to its correct position so now let's wait for it to cool down a little bit so that the solder solidifies again and it doesn't move anymore now we'll check if it's okay let's clean up a little bit I'm using isopropyl alcohol to clean this up so some solder fluxes are you can actually leave on the PCB there that they are non clean but I like to always clean my PCB after soldering so that I can inspect the area that there are no bridges around it or caused by the reflowing so proper clean with the toothbrush I'm using a kids toothbrush here since the bristles are a lot softer than adults so it doesn't damage the PCB that at all so alcohol yeah isopropyl alcohol clean the solder fox away a little bit of hot air to dry out the area so that I can inspect it better the alcohol will actually evaporate it by itself and doesn't leave any residue on the PCB but the heat gun makes it faster so I can see the result faster so now I'm just turning the board around and trying to see if there are any bridges or anything like that caused by the reflowing seems to be fine So the temperature I used was 400 degrees Celsius and high airflow so that there's maximum amount of heat going to that specific area so that I don't need to keep the heat gun there on the chip too long because uh, too much hot air for a long period of time will damage the components but if you use hot air for a short period of time it won't damage the components and also check that you don't haven't knocked any capacitors or anything right next to the chip off during the reflowing now we're just cleaning up let's clean up the pins that we reflow also and it's very important uh, the cleaning part because uh, the 
pads that are responsible for the buttons need to be extra clean otherwise the buttons will stick to the solder flocks or won't work at all because it's an insulating material it doesn't conduct electricity at all so make sure that the pads are extra clean those brass pads there Also, when you're cleaning up flux, you can use a, a piece of paper, a towel or something like that. So it sucks up the flux when the alcohol melts it or dissolves it. Put in the back the button. There's actually an alignment pin there that lines it to the correct position. And the hooks uh, on, on the sides clips the plastic to the surface. PCB. Now let's reassemble the remote again so that we can test it. Did our repair work? So, testing time. The IR motion works still fine. Every button seems to work. Let's try some Mario Kart to see if the motion control works. Because last time when I used to test this, the motion control didn't work and I was not able to turn the car around. Yes, the motion control works. Oh. As you can see, I can turn around the car and I can drive around the court circuit and everything seems to work. So the problem was that the accelerometer chip uh, has probably was ripped off from the pads or Somehow the solder joints were broken, but reflowing the chip helped fixing the issue. Doesn't help me as a gamer, but at least the remote control works. And happy gaming!